In this video, we will show you how to configure the VLAN management access for the Infinite Wireless R5000 devices and how to separate the management traffic from the customer traffic. VLANs are used to create logical topologies regardless of the network's physical topology. They contribute to reducing the multicast traffic in the network as every VLAN is a separate multicast domain. And another important aspect is that by using VLANs you can make your network more secure and more manageable. In a MIN network, packet transfer can be done either by switching or routing. In switching mode, which is activated by default, the decision about how and where to switch packets is based on the switch group IDs and on a set of rules for each group. If a packet enters a certain switch group in the MINT area, it can leave MINT only through infinite units which have the same switch group ID configured. The packet will be forwarded towards the appropriate remote interface of the switch group. Starting with polling-based firmware version 1.90.0, the management access involves a VLAN logical interface and a switch virtual interface, the SVI, which is a layer 3 logical interface that allows you to access and manage the infinite unit. And starting with polling-based firmware version 1.90.33 or TDMA-based firmware version 2.1.7, the configuration method for the VLAN management has been changed. So please bear in mind that the procedure described in this video will not work with older firmware versions. In the default configuration, Switch Group 1 is available with the Ethernet 0 and RF50 interfaces added to it and with no additional rules defined. In this case, all frames that enter through the local unit's Ethernet interface will be delivered to the opposite side of the link and sent out through the remote unit's Ethernet interface and vice versa. This simple configuration enables transparent switching, meaning that all packets will be switched between the Ethernet 0 and RF50 interfaces. In case of remote VLAN management, to separate the customer traffic from the management traffic, at least two switch groups must be used, one for each of the two types of traffic. The IP address of the Ethernet interface can be used in routing configurations, but also for local management access. The scenario that I will use to describe the VLAN management access feature includes a point-to-point -point link between two infinite wireless R5000 units and one server machine behind each radio device. We will configure VLAN 100 and network 10.10.10.0/24 for the management access traffic, and we will create switch group 100 for this purpose with the SVI interface attached to it. And then VLAN 10 and network 10.10.20.0/24 will be used for the customer traffic, which will be transmitted through switch group 10. The main purpose of the scenario is to show you how the slave unit can be remotely accessed from the backbone server via the radio interface using the management VLAN 100. Management access will be denied from the customer server, which is directly connected to the slave unit. And you will also see that the customer's data traffic will be allowed to pass through the link using VLAN 10. Now to perform the configuration, first let's connect to the current management IP address of the slave unit, which in my setup is 10.10.30.2. I am not directly connected to the slave unit, but I can access it via the radio link. So by being connected to the master, I can access both units. After the login session, let's open the basic settings menu and go to the max switch section. Here we have switch group 1 with the default SVI interface attached to it. We could use switch group 1 either for data or management traffic, but for simplicity and easy tracking we will define the switch group IDs to match the VLAN tags. So let's delete the existing configuration. First click the remove L3 management button to remove the default SVI interface. And then remove switch group 1. Next, I will create a new switch group with ID 10 for the data traffic. I will add the Ethernet 0 and RF50 ports to it and then create a rule to allow only tagged traffic with VLAN 10. Let's move forward to the configuration for the management access and create a new switch group with ID 100. We won't add the Ethernet 0 interface to switch group 100 since the slave unit should be accessed only via the radio interface because we want to restrict customer access to the CPE. 
We don't need to add any rule to this group. The next step is to create the SVI interface which will be used for the management access traffic. So let's click Create L3 Management on Switch Group 100 to create a new SVI interface. In the Network Settings section you will see that the interface is automatically created and it has the same ID as the Switch Group. In this case the ID is 100. So let's assign a management IP address to the SVI 100 interface. 10.10.10.2/24. The remote management configuration of the slave unit is finished, so let's click the apply button to save the changes. Now let's connect to the current management IP address of the master unit, which in my setup is 10.10.30.1, to perform the necessary configurations. First, we must delete the default configuration for the management access. Then, let's create a new switch group with ID 10 for the data traffic in the same way as we did for the slave unit. Next, create another switch group with ID 100 and click the Create L3 Management button. Then, assign a management IP address to the new SVI, in this case it will be 10.10.10.1/24. Still in the Network Settings section, create the VLAN 100 interface by clicking the Create VLAN button. Set the VLAN ID to 100 and make sure Ethernet 0 is selected as the parent interface. Then go back to the Mac switch section and add the VLAN 100 and RF50 interfaces to switch group 100. When the VLAN interface is added to the switch group, no additional rules are required. Traffic with the corresponding VLAN ID received via the parent interface is allowed to enter the switch group and then the dot one q tag is removed. Now the configuration of the master unit is also completed, so let's click the apply button to save the changes. In order to test the management access, I have to add the VLAN 100 tag to the Ethernet interface of the Backbone server. I will assign a VLAN ID directly on my network card, but please note that not all network adapters support this feature. If your network card doesn't support VLAN IDs, you can use other methods like external switches or virtual switches configured from Microsoft Windows, for example. Now I will go to Ethernet Settings, Change Adapter Options, and then to the properties of my Ethernet adapter, hit Configure, go to the Advanced tab, search for VLAN ID, and I will configure VLAN 100. Next, I will assign an IP address to the network card in the same subnet as the management IP addresses. In this example, it will be 10.10.10.100/24. The VLAN is set, so now I will try to access both the master and the slave units from the Backbone server. The connection is allowed as expected. Now let's change the VLAN ID to a different value like 105 for example. This will demonstrate that by using a different VLAN besides the one defined for the management, I will not be able to access the units. Let's proceed. As you can see, the access is no longer permitted. The result will be the same for the untagged traffic. To complete the test procedure, I will restore the VLAN 100. And I will configure VLAN 10 on the second network card of the Backbone server, which is used for the customer data traffic.
Of course, the correct IP must be configured on the second card as well. And it is 10.10.20.100/24. Then I will send some traffic using iperf towards the customer server. And I will check the max statistics for switch group 10 at the slave unit. As you can notice, the number of packets in switch group 10 is incremented, proving that the customer data traffic with VLAN 10 is allowed to pass through the link. This brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching.